It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Bears and the 49ers. And it comes your way next. It is a pretty hot late summer afternoon here in the South Bay as EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Silicon Valley and Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And before kickoff, Charles, quickly, your keys to the game. Well, partner, I could give you the standard ones, turnovers, special teams play. But here's one that doesn't get talked about much anymore, and that's time of possession. Whoever controls the football gives their defense a break and takes care of business, that's the team that's going to win this ball game. The kicker, Jake Moody, has got it teed up. And we are underway now from Santa Clara. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. To the air, Williams. Looking left side, he's got it complete. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Give him three there on the first play of the game, and it's second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That's good for a first down, his second catch of the opening drive. So we just called his name on the previous snap, and they go right back to him, Charles, for a second consecutive completion. Yeah, I think what we're discovering on this drive is that he feels like he has answers no matter what defense you throw up there. He reads it, finds the open spot, and is available for the completion. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. My first thought is surprise, because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Now a second and ten. On play action, here's Williams. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often miss time that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A lot of great quarterbacks from USC. Here's another one. The rookie's got a first down. And this offense has come out swinging here in the early going. They pick up a nice chunk on that pitch and catch. And the two of them have this offense moving in the right direction to start this game. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. And he'll go right back to Allen. That's complete. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it's second down. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball, and sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. They'll run for the first time with DeAndre Swift, and he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And a change of scenery in 2023 worked out well for Swift as he racked up a new career high in rushing yards during his lone season as an Eagle. 
And now he's made the move to Chicago and is expecting to power their running game. First down, and they go with Swift again. And a short pickup there down to about the nine. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. Looking to throw is Williams. That's to Moore, and he's got it. Touchdown, Bears. A nine-yard touchdown there. And the Bears get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Those are the drives that prove a lot. you got a rookie quarterback, Charles. You're on the road, takes him down, throws the touchdown pass. And in a game like this, with, as you described, a rookie quarterback, the team usually says, okay, we got to take care of this guy. we got to protect him. But when he goes out and plays like this on the first drive on the road, he doesn't have to say, I'm here to be your leader. They just need to follow him. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it concludes with a touchdown reception by D.J. Moore. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Well, the 49ers get ready to go on offense and it's the Pro Bowler Brock Purdy at the helm in his third NFL season now out of Iowa State. And the great story of Brock Purdy continues. Had he been drafted in the first round, I think people would be singing his praises to the skies, but for whatever reason, people can't let go of the fact he's Mr. Irrelevant and they don't give him the credit he deserves. He is not just a system quarterback. He's a guy who enhances his team. Not just along for the ride, he's the one steering the ship. And without him, their ceiling significantly drops. Here's Purdy. Connects with Kittle underneath. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. So they'll get eight out of that completion, and it'll be second in a couple. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Here's the pro bowler, Christian McCaffrey. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. Purdy from the gun on third down. Steps away to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. The third down conversion is successful. Give him 12 yards that time. Certainly not a positive sign if you're the D coordinator and you see your guys give up that space so early in the game. Third down, that's when the clamps are supposed to come out. But his ability to create things with his legs makes things difficult. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. Still first down. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Now Purdy. Open man is Samuel. Complete. So the completion good for seven there. And that's going to bring up second down.
Purdy will set up to throw it here. And that nearly an interception here on this opening drive, but he gets a reprieve. It's third down. And I think he was a little surprised to see the ball sitting out there like that. That's a ball he had a chance to come away with, but it winds up an incomplete pass. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Purdy looking to throw. And it's caught by Jennings. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. First down, San Francisco. The pickup, 14 yards. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. Purdy now to throw. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. Back to throw, Purdy. The tight end, Kittle, has it on the left side. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. Ran the perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. First and goal, and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. McCaffrey will get into the end zone for a 49er touchdown. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of a season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Jake Moody now for the point after. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. Seven, seven. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense... They just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, 
Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 28 yards the gain there on the catch and run. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. Really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought... Yeah, he might be locked in for this one. Working out of the gun, Williams. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. And they'll come up second and seven. They'll go play action here with Williams. Targeting more, and he's got him on the crossing pattern. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. 36 yards. They made that way too easy for them. No one is supposed to be that open against an NFL defense. Once he caught the ball, there wasn't anybody close enough to stop him. And he was able to continue downfield after making the catch. They come out with one back and three tight ends. Off the bootleg, it's Williams. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line, second and goal. From the gun, here's Williams. That's to Moore, and he's got it. Touchdown, Bears. A great play there with his second touchdown of this opening quarter. And the Bears have taken the lead. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Santos now to add the PAT. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it concludes with a touchdown reception by D.J. Moore. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And, partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down.
A handoff, McCaffrey running right, and he stopped immediately there. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Really good stop there by the end in this 4-3 defense. Yeah, not just pass rushers anymore, are they? Those guys can use their hands, control the point of attack, shed those blockers, and go get those ball carriers. They'll come up facing third and five. Purdy. And trying to get it to Samuel, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. And now the Bears coming out as they get ready. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and ten. To throw, it's Williams. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Second and ten. From the shotgun, a throw for Williams. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. And it's a real luxury when you have a guy who can turn a short throw into a solid gain at any moment. Once he caught that ball, he ID'd where the open grass was and got there in a hurry to pick up a new set of downs for his offense. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. They will run straight ahead with Swift. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. DeAndre Swift, a 15-yard touchdown run. And the Bears have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Boy, still in the first quarter, and look out. I mean, they are on pace for over 80 points in this game. I don't know that they'll get there, CD, but this has been impressive to watch so far. That certainly would be history in the making, wouldn't it, partner? I'm glad we're here to actually watch and see if it actually happens, although, like you, I have my doubts, but they are firmly in control of this game. A pretty wild first quarter, 21-7, our score. The Bears with the football. We get set to begin quarter number two as they've got it as we resume action. Set now to kick this one away and off it goes. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So... Frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. Stop shy of the 45. Showed off a nice little move on the play, though. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Yeah. 
Operating from the gun, Purdy. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Looking to throw, Purdy. That is incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Here's second and ten. Operating from the gun, Purdy. That's complete. It's Kyle Juszczyk. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Good, sure, hands there from a guy not accustomed to catching a whole lot of passes. But how about the way he was able to pull that one in and pick up good yardage? And this offense on third down today, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. That's to McCaffrey complete. Call it a loss of two there on the play. And it'll be fourth down. I believe I could see what they were trying to do there, but unfortunately, the back ran out of room. Too close to the sideline. And for defenders, we're often taught 11 on the field. Those sidelines can become the 12th defender. It worked to the defense's advantage on that play. On fourth down, the Niners trot out Mitch Wisnowski to punt the football. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. Right now, everything they touch turns to gold. This is their fourth possession. Touchdowns on their first three possessions. I mean, this defense, they can't seem to stop them. It's like they're on skates. Great analogy, Brandon, because they are pushing them back and winning everything at the line of scrimmage. They've just been laying down tracks towards the opposite end zone. So to themselves, all they're saying is, if we don't make a mistake, there's no way they can stop us. Here's a second and five now from the 25. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. So now third down coming up. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense. A little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them. But they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. Here comes third down and seven to throw Williams and he'll find his man on the out route that's Allen and he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds so the completion good for just three and that's going to bring up a fourth down here comes the Bears punter now as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line first and 10 at their own 26. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. That ball caught. Brandon Ayuk. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Now we're going to get a stoppage. It appears to be an injured bear on the field. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside.
A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. And he'll get maybe a couple, if that, up to the 46. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Still third down. After the delay, they're backed up even further for third and long. The throwing here, Purdy. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And they do get this across midfield of the 49, but a small consolation prize as he's well short of the first. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. Wisnowski on to punt as he sends this one away. So out of bounds on the punt, and the spot will be, the side judge says, right at, yeah, right at the 35-yard line here. Another drive coming up for this Chicago offense. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still, they've got the lead here, and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Throwing is Williams. There's a short throw. It's caught by Komet. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be second down. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large-body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays... They're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to... And oh, he coughed it up! But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, or that could have been trouble. A call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill. Boy, the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. Looking left side, that's caught by Moore. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A very solid gain of 27. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So you got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 27. They'll fake the give. Now Williams. And a dangerous throw there, incomplete. He threw that into coverage. It was nearly intercepted. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. Swift going to try up the middle. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. Looking to throw is Williams. 
Flushed out right. Oh, fighting off the defender. And almost, but not quite. Needed 10. He got nine. Fourth down. That was a good effort there, trying to do it on his own. But as a defender, you're in a tough spot because you have coverage responsibilities behind you. And if you take off too quick to try and get him down, he might loft it over your head. So better to track with your man defensively than try to go up and make a stop on the quarterback. Exactly right. What you're hoping is that your guys in the front seven can get him down. Santos' kick is up and through, and they will open things up a bit more. It's 24-7. to so it was fourth down and one in the red zone, but they elect to take just the three. And I'm a little bit surprised that that's exactly what they decided to do. I kind of thought that they would go for it in that situation. But sometimes I'm sure you just think to yourself, take the three points, put them in your pocket, and move on. The Bears send the kicking team out there, and they will send this one away. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. As San Francisco's offense returns to the field, the last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10, right at the 30. They'll try and start this drive in the air. That's complete out left to Ayuk. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. When the hitch route has run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. This is Samuel. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 44-yard line. And they'll accept that penalty. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Now Purdy. Got a man, that's Ayuk. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run big time pass a one two combination look pretty good how about that let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch though Purdy will set up to throw it here he's got this complete to Ayuk on the out route and he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there back-to-back -back receptions for him and it's another first down and Ayuk certainly established himself last year as a bona fide number one receiver in the NFL he produced a first down on over 80% of his receptions. And so far, he's picked right up where he left off as he earns a new set of downs for this offense. And keep an eye on him. He can also find the end zone as well. To about the 26 here. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. He'll get this into the hands of Ayuk. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 
19 yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. <laughs> I can't help but chuckle a little bit because at this point, it can't be a surprise to anyone in the building who's going to get the ball. They just keep feeding him over and over, and he just keeps on delivering. This is first and goal and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. Purdy now to throw. And it's caught. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. From the two now, second and goal. Here's Purdy. That is caught by the tight end, Kittle. Touchdown, 49ers. Two yards on the touchdown there. And the 49ers get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Moody good with the extra point. And the lead down to 10, 24-14. So that drive goes eight plays. And it all ends with a George Kittle touchdown. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. the line prepping for their next drive the Bears offense and with a two score lead already they may just look to get this thing to the locker room and incomplete on the deep ball definitely worth taking in our deep shot here he's already found the end zone twice here in the first half yeah go back to that same well they've had trouble containing him but able to contain him on that play once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Working out of the gun, Williams. This will be caught downfield by Moore. Now he's loose again. Touchdown, Bears! D.J. Moore on his way to a monster game. Three first-half touchdowns. And the Bears will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. And this is turning out to be something to monitor as this game goes along. That's now three touchdown catches for him here in this first half alone. Now the point after try for Santos. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. The Bears send the kicking team out there, and they will send this one away. And 
and he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. I don't think they need to be reminded of the situation here. I mean, the clock is dwindling. Three-score deficit waiting for them at halftime unless they can get something on the board here before intermission. Pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. Jervon Dexter never giving up. He works his way to the QB for a loss of 12. So this has been a lot like a tennis match, hasn't it? Back and forth. Both of these offenses have their way so far. So maybe the question isn't who's going to score the most points in this game. Maybe it's who's going to get some stops. Yeah, absolutely. And that sack, finally a first step in the right direction for a stop. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports Halftime Report now. Due to time constraints, we move you forward in today's broadcast to the beginning of the third quarter. And we welcome you back now. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, getting set for quarter number three here. The 49ers going to have the football and trailing on the scoreboard as we get back underway on EA Sports. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. And you have to think, Charles, down three scores already. They need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance. And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, efficient, get the ball into the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. On first down, this is McCaffrey. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. Now a second and two. Now this time they'll throw it. Here's Purdy. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. No question that they're going to continue to look his way. Six catches in the first half and now seven on the game. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Play action. Now Purdy. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Second and six.
So they'll go ahead and accept the penalty. Still second down. Now Samuel. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. And now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Purdy from the gun. That is caught. He's going to have the first down and then so. Touchdown. Juwan Jennings. 43 yards. And the Niners are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Now Moody for the PAT. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. So this drive spans seven plays. And the end result for the 49ers, a touchdown. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Bears offense and Caleb Williams set to go to work once more. And as we show you some of the highlights from earlier, he has been instrumental in getting his guys the lead as he looks to finish strong and close this one out. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And they were terrific in the first half, built up a sizable lead, and it's just been cut into a bit following the opening drive score on the other side. But this is a unit that has to be itching to get the football again. And you can say that again. They've got to be pretty eager because, let's face it, they've had to sit through halftime, then sit on the sidelines and watch that drive. So you can bet that they're saying, let's get on with this. we got to go out there and get some more points. Second and 10 now from the 27. On the handoff, this is Swift. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And 4C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Here's third and seven. To throw, it's Williams. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. From the shotgun, a throw for Williams. And he will find Scott on the right side complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 12 more yards for him there. It's a first down. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. Here's Williams. That to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause 
by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try to mount a stand before they're backed up even further. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. On play action, here's Williams. And that's out to the flat for Swift. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 34-yard line. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. Off the bootleg, it's Williams. And to the right side here, it's Allen. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. From the 25, here's second down at a yard. From the gun, here's Swift. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's more. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. They run out of the gun with Swift. And here he'll get it down to the seven. They give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. Here's Swift. A strong running. <laughs> he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. And now defensively, you have to look at this like the game's on the line. It's just the third quarter, but another touchdown given up here could really spell an end to their chances. So they need to toughen up and keep them out of the end zone. Second and goal from inside the five. To the air, Williams. That's to Moore, and he's got it. Touchdown, Bears. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Bears are able to widen their advantage. So that one, his fourth touchdown catch of the game. One behind the all-time record of five. Santos now to add the PAT. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. That one was an extended drive. 14 plays all told. And it concludes with a touchdown reception by D.J. Moore.
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. There are the 49ers getting set to trot out there. They did what they had to do to start this third quarter, went down, got the touchdown to cut the lead, but the matching touchdown a moment ago, and we're right back where we started at halftime. Yeah, you're exactly right, partner. They had a little bounce in their step after scoring that first touchdown, but the defense gave one up, and that's the problem right now. Can they get better play from their defense while they continue to score on offense? Purdy off the play fake. That ball caught, Brandon Ayuk, and past the 40 before he's out of bounds. 16 yards right off the bat in a first down. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Back to throw, Purdy. Got a man right side, it's McCaffrey. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. That's caught inside the 20. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. We have seen big plays from both quarterbacks throughout this game, and there's another one right there. Going back and forth, almost like two excellent guitar soloists trying to top each other with each additional play. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Shotgun handoff now to McCaffrey. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, San Francisco. Christian McCaffrey with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Niners get a bit closer. Now he's doing his part, but still facing a sizable deficit. And he would like to do more, but he needs help from the other two-thirds, right? He needs his defense to bow up a little bit, and he also needs special teams to maybe create some big plays and help them get back in it. The extra point try now for Moody. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. So after the made field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And able to get this out to the 25. the line prepping for their next drive the Bears offense this now a 10 point game so things tightening a little bit after that last score able to slither by two yards on the carry there it'll be second down well any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly and that was because the defensive front they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage they used great leverage held their spot and stacked him up They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. 
Throwing is Williams. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. From the gun, here's Williams. He's got his target. That's complete. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. That's caught by his tight end, Gerald Everett. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and that'll make it second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. To throw once more, here's Williams. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here in Santa Clara. It's Bears football here. They also have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. On first and ten, it's Swift. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 67 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. They'll stay on the ground with Swift. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. As I take a look at the clock, I realize that this drive is eating up a good portion of the fourth quarter already. Got to tell you, partner, when you're trying to salt away a game, this is exactly what it's supposed to look like. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. And he's going to ball his way down to about the one-yard line. It'll be a pickup of eight and a good first step there with second and goal coming up. That's a great run right there on first down. Didn't quite get into the end zone, but now you've set yourself up for at least two, maybe three more shots from close range. Looking to throw is Williams. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Punching it in from a yard away. And the Bears are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. The defensively didn't seem like anybody had eyes on the quarterback, and he took advantage. So you think that maybe we're seeing some pretty good instincts for a young guy? Because that's the thing you worry about coming out of college. You're used to getting away with just about anything you want to do. You're just superior. Here, he has to read it, figure it out, and know when it's time to go. Now the point after try for Santos. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And 
And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. And the 49ers settling in for their next drive. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 27. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Over the middle complete. That's Jennings. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. A good decision in the end. The pull it and run gets him nine yards and a first. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain. So when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. 75 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before they always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Purdy now to throw. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. The Niners on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. They're looking at third and a few inches. Purdy gets this to his running back. It's Christian McCaffrey. So that'll go as a four-yard loss on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. I really like the angles that the tacklers came from on that play. They secured inside, took away the cutback. The sideline's there, so you can only go so far outside. And they were able to close in and tackle him for a loss. Yeah, they used your boy over there, the 12th man. Sammy Sideline, right? Sammy Sideline. You know something? He tackles pretty well, too. He's tougher than an airport stake. Purdy, big fourth down play. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a 49ers first down by a good three yards as they convert on fourth and five. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. He stopped to get it done, as you noted, and they did. Once more, Purdy looking to throw. That's over the middle and caught by Ayuk. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 13 yards there and a Niner first. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league... A loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. Defensively, you've got the nice lead here in the fourth quarter. You're saying, eh, if they want to get a run of a little over 10 yards, that's okay. <laughs> I hear what you're doing there, and I think you're on to something. They've loosened up on defense, so don't get fooled by the nice runs you're getting now. You've got to get bigger plays possibly think about throwing the football a bit more here and they'll bring him down at the 13 yard line they'll give him four yards there and it'll be second down well there wasn't much there with that hitch route they didn't gain what they expected but sometimes when you call a hitch you really don't have an alternate to go to you don't have a second route to throw it to so sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best in motion goes the tight end a give running left, it's McCaffrey. 
And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry, and they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. The Niners on third down, three for seven so far in this game. They're up against a third and one situation. That is caught, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw. And he'll take this into the end zone for a San Francisco touchdown. Christian McCaffrey. A three-yard touchdown run. And the 49ers have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you'd kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Moody good with the extra point, and the lead is trimmed down to 10. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL, but if you drop the football, that position could get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. And he'll find his man on the out route. That's Allen. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. To throw, it's Williams. Losing four yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And this will be touched by a member of the kicking team inside the 20, and it's at the 17-yard line. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Yes, sir. How about an out-of-boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. 
Jennings was the one he was looking for, but it'll be second down. Purdy will set up to throw it here. He's going to drop this down to McCaffrey. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. First down, San Francisco, the pickup, 14 yards. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now Purdy. Another grab here for the dynamic Christian McCaffrey. Two yards on the pickup there, and that will bring up second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. This is second and eight. Again, it's Purdy to throw it. He'll get this into the hands of Ayuk. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Winds up and lets it go for Samuel. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. And they're at the point of the ball game now where they've got to take some chances. They've got to put the ball in the air and just see what happens. But this defense knows that all too well. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. Play action. Now Purdy. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Here's Purdy. Oh, he'll look downfield for Kittle. Touchdown, 49ers. George Kittle, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Niners have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. No, we're not cheering. No, we're not rooting. But I am excited about this. And I know you are, too. We got a ball game again after that big-time strike. Big-time strike, and you are right. Don't go anywhere yet. This thing's not done. Now Moody for the PAT. The PAT good. It would draw him closer, but hold on just a second. A flag is down on the field. Well, certainly those are the types of mistakes they're trying to avoid as they attempt to protect this lead late in the game. And let's face it, they're hoping that this one doesn't cost them in a significant way. Yeah, one guy committed a penalty, but now the entire defense has to pay the price and try and rise up and overcome it. After the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. the line prepping for their next drive the Bears offense 
This game has really flipped on its head. Two unanswered touchdowns by the other side, and now you know, they take over here with just a very slim one-score lead. And we've seen this how many times now? Teams get a big lead, they go into coast mode, and all of a sudden they're scrambling and battling for a win down the stretch. They've got to put something together right here, otherwise they're in danger of doing the old snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. First down, and they go with Swift again. And he's got this one across midfield into 49er territory. 115 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. This is Swift on the counter. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. They'll try and run here with Swift. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Once again, it's Swift. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Swift and he is going to have the Bears first and that should be the capper no doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here Charles the lead in the fourth quarter this is when coaches that have a reliable running game they breathe a little easier on the sideline yeah they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game that means they're really counting on that offensive line counting on the runners taking care of the football because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, and he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. Charles, normally when you see a group score this many points, it's a complete blowout, but instead they needed every single one of those in this close, high-scoring affair. And Brandon, I'm still on the edge of my seat after that one because when you have that much scoring and it still comes down to one possession game at the end, that's not something we see very often. In this case, these offenses, they brought it. The defenses, they're going to need some work going forward. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Santa Clara.